Greetings, everybody, and welcome to our talk on HELP Syndrome. All right, now this is a uh, kind of a little bit of a problem for a lot of med students because there's a lot of labs here, and this often is a consequence of preeclampsia. So it is definitely something that is a uh, fair game for step two, step three, uh, and it's something that you'll want to keep in your back pocket because they love to throw this at you because um, sometimes you can, you know, look at a woman, she's got high blood pressure, she's got proteinuria, and you think, boom, preeclampsia. However, there is a possibility she could have HELP syndrome. So you want to make sure that you know this one. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right-hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get uh, to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Um, if you can't, but uh, definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel. You'll get updates uh, as I... Uh, as I put more videos up, I'm trying to do that on a regular basis now, daily, semi-daily. Okay, these are all the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. I have videos on all of these. I talk about gestational and chronic hypertension in one video. I talk about preeclampsia in another video, and I talk about eclampsia in another video. So you want to understand all of these. Okay, HELP syndrome, what is it? Well, it's really a laboratory diagnosis. So these patients tend to have preeclampsia, and then they go on to develop this HELP syndrome. And again, like I said, it's a laboratory diagnosis. So they'll have hemolysis, and that's really a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, and you know all the manifestations of that. Elevated liver enzymes, so that's just an elevated AST and ALT, usually at least two times the upper limit of normal, and then low platelets. Um, about 50 to 20, 15 to 20 percent of women with HELP syndrome do not have preeclampsia, um, so that's important to, uh, to, to keep in mind. So even if you're just diagnosing someone for the first time with HELP syndrome, um, this is often not a problem because we get your analysis, you know, dipstick protein at every visit. So it's very hard to diagnose HELP syndrome without seeing preeclampsia if it is in fact there. Uh, but do bear in mind that they don't have to have preeclampsia to develop HELP syndrome. The majority, however, do. 10 to 20% of women with severe preeclampsia, so remember that's preeclampsia with a severe feature like headaches or blurry vision, uh, they go on to develop HELP syndrome. So about one in five. Um, now compared to preeclampsia, HELP syndrome tends to be in slightly older mothers, um, it's more common in white women, although gestational hypertension uh, overall tends to be more common in women of color. And then a previous pregnancy with HELP syndrome, they can have up to about a one in four chance of developing HELP syndrome with a subsequent pregnancy. Now, the diagnosis of HELP syndrome should be considered in any pregnant woman who comes in in the second half of gestation or immediately postpartum with new onset epigastric and right upper quadrant pain. So if you got a woman coming in, she's pregnant, she's got right upper quadrant pain, that's an immediate workup for HELP syndrome. You're gonna be getting CBC liver function tests at the very least, okay, all the time. So you got to remember that. Right upper quadrant pain is one of the most common manifestations of HELP syndrome. Remember, this is a laboratory diagnosis, but there are manifestations that can clue us in. Uh, some literature says up to 100% of women with HELP syndrome will have right upper quadrant pain, but remember, it's pain. So some women might just, you know, brush it off and not complain about it. So, you, you know, you can't rely on that alone, but right upper quadrant pain in a pregnancy, got to think HELP syndrome. There are a number of other manifestations, and if you've watched my preeclampsia video, you'll know that these are all manifestations of severe preeclampsia. One of the manifestations that's becoming more and more um, understood is brisk tendon reflexes. So that may not have been taught to you. All right, so what do we do for our workup? We get a CBC with smear. And we get that smear because with uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, we would expect to see schistocytes. We're going to get a BMP looking for renal function, liver function test, PTPTT, and serum amylase and lipase. 
And what we would expect to find is everything with HELP syndrome. Remember, H stands for hemolytic anemia, specifically a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So we would expect to see schistocytes and a normocytic anemia. EL stands for elevated liver enzymes. So we would expect to see an elevated AST and ALT, and that's two times the upper limit of normal. And then LP stands for low platelets, so we'd expect to see a thrombocytopenia. Now, another thing that you could see is on your liver function test is an elevated total bilirubin. That's a manifestation of the hemolytic anemia. Now, the major differential is acute fatty liver of pregnancy. That tends to be uh, associated with a hypoglycemia and TTP, which tends to have a more profound thrombocytopenia. Okay, uh, so when you have a woman with HELP syndrome, it's going to be very urgent to deliver her. Um, now, do we need to deliver her right now? Not necessarily, but she's going to be admitted, and she we're going to be keeping a close eye on her, and we're going to be uh, delivering her very soon, at least. Um, so we want to do a fetal assessment, get IV access because we're going to be giving magnesium sulfate, and then a Foley catheter. For medications, if she is hypertensive, we're going to give labetalol. Whether that's IV or PO depends on the degree of hypertension. I talk about that in the preeclampsia talk. We're going to give seizure prophylaxis with magnesium sulfate, so we don't wait for her to have a seizure. We give magnesium sulfate because there's such a high risk of developing a seizure, developing eclampsia when you already have HELP syndrome. And then we give dexamethasone. This is not necessarily to mature the fetal lungs. This is part of the treatment for HELP syndrome. Now, it does mature the fetal lungs, so that's kind of nice, but that's not necessarily why we're doing it. We're going to continue to recheck labs. If we have a worsening of the liver function test, if those continue to get worse and worse and worse, get an abdominal CT. We're not worried about teratogenicity with this because these women are further along, um, so having a CT is not a big deal. And what we're looking for is subcapsular hematomas, and the reason we're looking for that is because with HELP syndrome, there's mild necrosis of the liver, so you can get erosion of the vessels and bleeding into the liver parenchyma. We want to notify anesthesia because she's got a risk of seizures, so we want anesthesia there while she's delivering, and then we're going to deliver her. If she's unstable, um, then we try our best to stabilize her, but we need to deliver her immediately if we cannot get her stable. If she's less than 34 weeks and she's stable, we give the dexamethasone and we try to wait one or two days to get the fetal lungs matured. And, you know, if she is stable and, you know, she's okay, we can wait, you know, one even up to two weeks. And, um, you know, as long as she's not getting worse, you know, we can watch and wait. We want to try our best to get those fetal lungs matured and also to, um, to allow the fetus to develop as much as it can. You know, it's this balancing game where you're trying to allow fetal maturity, but also, you know, prevent complications in mom. If she's more than 34 weeks and she's stable, we just go ahead and deliver her. So we'll give the dexamethasone for her help syndrome, but we're not worried about fetal lung maturity. Um, so we just deliver her. Um, you don't even necessarily need to wait the 24 to 48 hours. This is just another um, sort of, um, I don't know, graphic that I put together, kind of arranging everything here. Make sure and get your appropriate consults, especially if you're taking CCS. This is an algorithm here. Um, so again, like I said, if it's less than 34 weeks, we give the dexamethasone. Um, if she's stable, then we will keep her in the hospital under observation, but we're gonna to try to allow a little bit more maturation of the fetus here. If she continues to deteriorate, we've gotta deliver her. If she is more than 34 weeks, we will certainly give the dexamethasone um, and deliver her, um, but that's really important if the platelets are really low. If the platelets are above 50, we don't even necessarily need to give the dexamethasone. You can, but you don't have to, um, and we'll just go ahead and deliver her. Remember, after 34 weeks, yes, it's preterm, um, but the fetus is very well matured, and uh, the, the risk of complications, while it is certainly higher than if it was a term delivery, is still pretty low. Complications, the big one is DIC. 
So keep an eye out on that platelet count. Uh, if it continues to drop or the PT and PTT begin to prolong, then you're looking at a DIC. Another one is abruptio placentae, or just placental abruption. Look for vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, non-reassuring fetal status. This would be an indication to deliver immediately. Um, and then there are a number of others. So to recap, HELP syndrome is a severe form of preeclampsia characterized by hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets, but not all of them have to have preeclampsia. About 15 to 20% do not. The diagnosis of HELP syndrome should be suspected in any woman in the later half of pregnancy or postpartum who comes in with right upper quadrant or epigastric pain. That's an immediate indication to get liver function tests on a CBC and check for HELP syndrome. Right upper quadrant pain is the most important symptom suggestive of underlying HELP syndrome. Medical management, manage the blood pressure with labetalol, prophylax her for seizures with MagSulf, and um, get, your, uh, get the HELP syndrome under control by giving dexamethasone. Now, if you're just going to go in right now and deliver her, you can, you can skip the dexamethasone, uh, but I wouldn't do that on USMLE because they're probably, they're, they're not going to ask you, you know, how can we wing this? They're going to want you to know that these are three things that you need to do in a patient with HELP syndrome. And we will deliver her at 34 weeks or if she is unstable. 